Welcome to the digitallifestyle.com video show and today we're going to be looking at the Vidibox wireless keyboard for Media Center and uh, Vidibox for offering this product out on their website. So let's have a look at the keyboard and it comes in this nice little box. Very nice with some instructions. Keyboards in here. What I really like as well, it comes with a little travel bag, we'll do that in a minute. And then the device comes with batteries, which I've fitted on this one. And then a receiver. And this is the receiver, the USB receiver, and it also comes with an extension cable, which can then connect to your PC and have it located uh, in line of sight. In the instructions it does say line of sight, uh, but during testing I found it works uh, pretty well out of sight anyway. Okay, so let's have a look at the keyboard. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my Samsung Q1 to do the test on this. So I'm going to plug the receiver into the USB on there. Now I have connected this up before. So it doesn't need to install any drivers, but when I did connect it up for the first time, it didn't install any drivers anyway. It's kind of went through its procedure. Um, I saw it sort of pop up with some things about installing the drivers, but I didn't need to um, download anything or insert any discs or anything. It found it all itself. Well, let's have a look at the keyboard and then we can compare it to some other keyboards. So this is the keyboard itself. Let's have a zoom in on that one. So you see it's a, a nice compact a lightweight keyboard. What's interesting is it's got a track sticker a trackball on it rather than a mouse. I remember on a previous video show I showed the Sony uh, XL301 which had the trackpad on the keyboard which I did like. But I also like this, this is a nice way of controlling the media center. Now obviously for me being left handed I prefer these the other way around. So I would prefer the uh, trackball on this side. Here the left and right mouth buttons, but if you're right-handed, that's fine for you. It's a nice light unit. It's got um, shortcut keys on there, so we've got um, volume, playback, uh, it's a little tape off here. We've got um, media centers or media player control, start, stop, email. Um, web. The one thing you notice it hasn't got is it hasn't got a green button on it to launch Media Center, and but it has got the Windows key on there, so you can use it to you can start Media Center up with that. So it, it is a very nice light device, and um, what I liked about it is that you don't need to install a great deal of graphics or special. You don't need to install a great deal of drivers or anything special on it. It works. I'm using it here with the Q1 and it's pretty accurate now. I'm going to try and show uh, control of the mouse because that's always one issue that you have with these things so excuse me while I zoom in. Okay here we have the Q1 and I've got the keyboard here and here and I can't I'm working backwards here so I can't exactly see what I'm, do <laughs> what I'm doing. But you can see it's pretty accurate to use this. You can use the keys nice and simple and it works pretty well. Let's zoom out a bit. So a nice little package. Keyboard's nice and light, and um, it looks nice. Nice thing to have in your living room when you're using your media center on the sofa. And like I say, it comes with its own little bag. So let's have a look at that. Okay. Nicely stored away. Uh, one thing I didn't show you as well, which I'm not sure I can see with not the lights on too much, is that this actually glows the trackball on there, which is a, a nice little touch, especially in using it in the dark. Now that's a nice little keyboard, fits away nicely like that. One thing I have found is um, there doesn't seem to be a way of really switching the, the unit off. 
this button initiates the contact back to the back to the machine. This button here, um, which kind of wakes it up. But I don't see an on-off switch on the unit. So I'm going to have a look and see if I can find a way uh, of doing that. I can't immediately see one, which could be a bit of a disadvantage um, when you're packing it away like this, because you maybe want to switch the keyboard off while you're packing it away and not accidentally pressing the delete button on your, on your documents. But still a nice keyboard and uh, fits in nicely there. Now I want to compare some other keyboards that I've got. Uh, and you see this one here, not really for media sense, but it gives you an idea of a keyboard that that I carry around with me. This is the Q1 keyboard and uh, you've seen this on previous videos, it fits very nicely uh, together. But if you notice the actual size of the keyboard, especially when you've got it packed away, it's not actually that different. You can see that on there. So I could actually leave this in my bag and uh, carry a full size keyboard around me, which would be very nice. There's not a great deal of difference in weight. This is USB, obviously this is wireless, and you've got to carry the, the adapter around you, but still it's, uh, it shows you it's a nice size. The other keyboard really that could potentially rival that one is the Microsoft Media Center keyboard, which has a few more features on it, uh, but has one major disadvantage that you've never seen this before, and that is the pointer on there, and it's actually unusable. Uh, it was a real disappointment. I got this one to control Media Center from the sofa, and this track stick is absolutely useless. And all the people have tried it, uh, tried to use it, but it is totally useless. Uh, you end up going up, down, past where you want it to go, and, and there's just no way you can actually use this for any length of time. I've tried it, and it's just so frustrating that you don't use it. The rest of the keyboard is great. You've got the Media Center button on here, uh, shortcuts here for live TV, recorded TV, guide, DVD menu um, and you've got some other things like my pictures, my documents and you've got all the transport controls there so as a media center keyboard it works pretty good one thing I have found with it though is it's not 100% accurate so it's almost like a typical situation with a remote control that's infrared is you do get missed keys um, no good for playing games, it's okay for for launching the old media center application. Well, the keyboard I want to show off just in comparison size. This is the Microsoft keyboard that I use. This is the 6000 uh, wireless laser mouse. Uh, now this is a nice keyboard. I really do like using this one. A bit grimy this one. This one gets day to day use. Uh, but in no way does that really compete with the others because I wouldn't really want to sit and use this on the couch. It's, definitely a desktop keyboard. But when you see the difference in size you'll see the difference in the usability of these keyboards. So overall the Videobox keyboard, I really like it. The uh, accuracy is really good. I haven't tried anything like a game on it yet but I've had no major issues with the, with the receiver. Um, it works fine, it works exactly as stated. The response is, is very good the accuracy of the ball on there is really good as well. It's really usable, great if you're watching the TV up there then you've got this on your knee and uh, as good as the Sony one that we saw last week. Uh, check out the link in the show notes for details and for prices. Just to add one thing before I go, I've tried the uh, range of this machine and I've gone across into another room out, directly out of line of sight and it carried on working. Now whether it's just because it's got a good signal in this room but certainly uh, where the Microsoft keyboard would struggle with range and then definitely could operate a remote room in another room, uh, this carries on working. So it's pretty good for that, so if you've got a large room uh, then this is definitely a good keyboard.